everybody. Welcome back to our 8-bit series. Today we're going to do our final work on the Nasty 1050 drive. We'll get that one done and that will finish up the four drives we worked on. And then we'll look at that program recorder. So let's get started on this one. So we have here our dirty, very, very dirty 1050 drive. This has shown up a couple times in a few other videos where I opened it up to look at how things were connected as I was working on the other drives. So it, do, it probably looks familiar to some of you who you watched the first 1050 drive and even the Indus drive. So here we go. We're going to take this apart. There are six screws on the bottom, two for the bezel, four for the actual case. And if you recall from when I was working on the first 1050 drive, I salvaged the screws out of this one for that one. But later on I went in my big bucket of screws and I found replacements from previous projects. So we take that up here. This comes off, but it's kind of stuck dirty in here. So it's pop it off like that. That's going to need some major cleaning. Now as you can see, this is a filthy, filthy, filthy drive. I actually should get out my camera. Let's get the little one. Let's we'll set up the small camera here. Just so I can do some close-ups of how filthy this beast is. So just to show you in close-up in here. She's very, very dirty. As you can see there, look at this mess. I have not turned this thing on yet. I haven't tried to use this one yet. I'd rather clean it first and then have it blow up, then have it blow up while it's still dirty. So let's take it apart here. These aren't held in by any screws. They just sit in here like such. And then the motherboard on the bottom just sits in there too, as far as I recall. Well, there's two clips that hold it. So let's disconnect the drive from the, the power board. When you pull these out, don't pull straight up. Rock them back and forth. Use the leverage of the plug to loosen it up. Don't just pull straight up, you rip the wires. Yeah, you do take a chance on bending the connector that way. Now, I always take pictures of these here, so let me get my camera. Or in this case, my phone. Let me get my phone and just take a picture of how these are connected in here. In case I get confused later on. I'm plugging them back in. So that's in. That's going to need a good cleaning. And now this is held in by two little clips here. You just got to take and bend them back a little bit, and you should be able to move them on the board like that. Do this one on the same side over here. And then in the back, you got to slide it forward to get them out of the hole here. And then we also have these little shock absorbers right here for the drive. I usually pull them out first because when I'm cleaning I don't want them going down the sink and we had broken plastic there. I'm going to have to glue back in place. See it's holding that pin. So I have to glue that back in. So this is ready for a good scrubbing. Some of this discoloration on the top, I assumed it was smoke. But it may not be just smoke. It may just be plastic aging. We'll find out. So all of this is ready for the sink. And these right here. Ew, dead bug, dead bug. What I'll do is I'll blow these down out really good. Let me just look over. I just want to make sure nothing's obviously bad in here. Like something blown, caught on fire, blew up or whatever. I don't see anything, so I will use the compressed air to blow that out 
and clean the connectors in the back. This one I will blow out, but let's just check also, let's check the motor. It's spinning, so the belt's not stuck. And what about the stepper motor here? Is that going to move? All right, so that's not stuck. And that's not stuck, good. So I just need a good cleaning in here. Yeah, I opened this one up when I was working on the Indus drive because I was considering taking the um, track zero sensor out of here. Then I realized it was a totally different setup. So I couldn't do that. Surprisingly, or not surprisingly, I guess, the 1010 or the 1050 and the 810 do not use the index hole sensor. They must just rely on reading the tracks. What we got in here? Any dates as to when this thing was made? I'm going to assume 1983. I was reading yesterday that they had warehouses full of these 1050 drives. And they were like selling them dirt cheap back in 84, 85 when Jack Tremiel took over Atari. So let's go ahead. I'm going to get the blower. I'm going to, I'm going to wash the other thing. I'll do that off camera because nobody wants to watch that. And then I'll blow these out too. I'll do that on camera. And then we'll scrub it down really good and see what we get. Okay, so I've set up here now. I sprayed them off just to get some of the buildup off of it. Now I'm going to scrub them down with just straight soapy water. See what we can get off of this. See how clean we can get them. And if the soapy water doesn't cut it, then I'll go at it with something more stronger like rubbing alcohol or something. Let's try the soapy water first. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a toothbrush. I'm just going to use it to gently agitate things here. Get some water down in on the board. But I'm going to use the compressed air to spray it clean. So just get down in here. Get the, get the dirt moving, get the dust that's sticking there moving so I can blow it out. And this one, yeah, I'll do the same here. Close the head down so I don't get any on the head. Yeah, now I'll come back and I'll wipe them down with a Q-tip and some alcohol or Windex or something to get them clean. But I got all the grime off of them. That's what I wanted to get rid of. All right, so now I'm going to do some more detail cleaning on this because my quick brushing didn't get all the gunk out of it. So this is just straight rubbing alcohol. I'm just going to spray it in here and take a Q-tip and just clean up on the insides, the parts that the toothbrush didn't get to. And again, is this going to make it run any better? <laughs> no, but it's just, might as well make it a little better. All right, so that's done. I'm going to disk drive here. What I'm more concerned about in here is making sure that the read write head is clean. So again, some, oops, already had the cap off of that one. Again, some rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip. Lift up the read right head a little bit to get down so you can see the, the headers right there, that white square with the line across it. And just make it clean. 
and she is dirty too I can see that right now look at that and let's go on the other side is a piece of felt which just wipe that felt off now what we have to do here is these rails need to be cleaned and then re-lubricated so I'm just going to use this to wipe off any dust that's on them like so and then this is sewing machine oil and it works very good for this I'm just going to take and put a drop on the counter here and then I'll take a clean Q-tip and I'll apply it to the rail let me close that, I don't want to get any on the reed right head obviously so I'll apply it to the rail as such and then we'll move the head back and forth make sure she's nice and covered and yeah, that's nice and moved up this bearing doesn't seem to be sticking at all. If it was, I would put a little drop in it. Actually, you know what I might actually do? I'm going to take this, really saturate it, just squeeze down a little bit. That can just work its way down in there. And it's the other side here. This is fine here. This doesn't seem to have any problem. But again, I can do the same here. Then we will take, let's get this bezel, front bezel cleaned off really good. Again, I'm going to just use alcohol because it would also, with the rubbing alcohol, it dries and it doesn't, I don't have to worry about it drying and leaving any film behind. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to give it a good wipe down right here with rubbing alcohol. Alright, so now let's do up the case. I'm just going to take the Windex again and I'm just going to get the in here any parts that I may have missed with the scrubbing. Then I've got to glue this pin back, pin connector back in. I was looking at this and looking at my other 1050 drive, which you'll see once I set this up for testing. Well, I'll do a smoke test first in here. And I can see it definitely does need a retro braiding. So I will be setting this up. I'll have to check the weather. I think we got sunny weather this weekend. If so, I'll be setting this up for a good scrubbing, a good cleaning. Now, if you wash these things in a sink with a lot of water, always make sure you get all the water out of all of the holes, especially these holes here. What I do is I take and do this to make sure there's no water left in because even though the case may be dry you could have water in here and you don't want that dripping down on the, on the system. I showed in the other one how to get some of these ground in stains out with a wire brush which may or may not be something that somebody wants to do but it is doable this has a texture on it so if you just I'm going to put some rubbing up on here you take a soft wire brush like this and you don't grind at it, just stir over it. It goes right down into the crack and gets this scuffs out. I'm not doing it hard enough to scratch it. I'm just doing it enough to get the scuffs, which is basically just pieces of rubber stuck down inside. Like right here. Let's see if I can get it off with this first without that. See how it doesn't want to come up like that. But if I do that and I just, just gentle circles. I'm not grinding into it at all, just gentle circles. It gets it, almost will be a bit of it out. But this is going to need a retro -brighting. Probably after I retro it, then I'll find all the stains I'll need to remove. I don't believe in just washing with Windex alone. I think you should wash it with soap and water. Use it to cut through any of the grease, any of the stuff that's on there. And then after it dries, 
use Windex. I think what I'll do is after, like I said, after I retrobrite this, and by retrobriting, I'm not going to go through the process of getting the um, hydrogen peroxide and setting it up like that. I'm going to just use the straight sun retrobriting on this, which is basically just set it out in the sun and let the sun bleach the color out of it. I'll give that a shot first before I go through the whole process of the hydrogen peroxide. Because that does work relatively good. Alright, so all the parts have been cleaned as best as we can. Now we can consider, well, I can glue this back together first. Then we'll put it back, then we will reassemble it. I keep saying, saying to myself I should just use the ultraviolet 3D resin to do it because I can do that and I can cure it with my ultraviolet flashlight. And I always keep forgetting. So there, I put it on there. Let it sit here and dry. All right, so now that it's dried, we can reassemble this. Now before I assemble it the rest of the way, I'm going to get a power supply and I want to test this uh, just to make sure it doesn't go boom. I don't know if this power supply is good or not, so if it doesn't work, I'll go get the other one. But this is, let me just compare the numbers on the bottom. Yes, this is one of the, this is the right one. So if this, it doesn't turn on with this one, then I'll get the uh, other power supply I have on the other 1050 drive. Okay, so let's just turn it on and see what we get here. Absolutely nothing. So this power supply is probably dead. Should, could be dead. I have one other one to test there. I know I had, out of all the power supplies I had, I know I had at least one bad one. Let's just see. I mean, I could always just get the multimeter and test it, but let's just see. Nothing again. Let's test that. Let's just see. Let's check the multimeter and make sure. Should work. Let's just see. I just want to see if it registers anything. Let's go get the one we know works and try that. Okay, this is the one that is off my other 1050 drive. Alright, I'm having a hard time plugging it in over there. Let's see what happens now. All right, so yeah, that lit up. That's nice. So everything moves, that's a good sign. So I guess the other drives, are, or the other power supplies are all dead, bad. I'll have to test them further. So we'll finish assembling this. Then we'll test it on the Atari itself and see how it works. It's still very ugly in the front. Let's try it. Is this going to make any difference or is this just stained ugly? I think it's just stained. I think after it dries, it's going to look dirtier or dirty again. So we'll go ahead and just dis dis uh, turn off here and we'll move the camera out to the 810. All right, so we're out here in front of the Atari 800. And you can see, uh, this is my other 1050 drive. You can see that this one is definitely discolored and needs some retrobiting badly. I got a 810 master disc, which is totally fine to boot up these. I just want to use it to test for the booting. Long TV. Is the TV not plugged? Oh, there it is. I didn't. I forgot things take a while to warm up. Old stuff. So we'll go ahead and put the diskette in here. Power up. 
close it, turn on, let's see if we boot. Boot error. Wonder why we're getting a boot error here. I'm not here moving the head anywhere. Oh, did we get something? Did it finally read it? Oh, it did read it. Maybe it had to work its way up to speed. Hey, she works. So there we go. Maybe I just had to let it run to get the bearings moving correctly. So she's working. So yes, very good, very good. I want to try something here. This spring isn't ejecting it. I'm going to have to look at that to see why this is not doing it. I have down here Master Disk 3, ill filled, ill faded DOS 3, which I happen to like, but there's a reason why it was ill faded. I want to boot it up and see if it boots up. I can't remember if the 800 can boot up DOS 3 or not. I believe it can. I hear the head moving now. Yeah. See, the reason why DOS 3 was ill-fated is even though it allowed you to have an enhanced density drive, 130, I believe it was 130 kilobyte instead of the 800 kilobyte that the 810 drive had, the problem that they had with it is instead of having 128 byte sectors, they switched over to 1024 byte blocks or sectors. So if you had a file that is 32 bytes long, say you had a little basic program, only a three or four line, it's only, say, say it's 256 bytes long on an 810 driver, on, on DOS 2 and later DOS 2.5 <coughs> or the other DOSes, it would only take up two sectors, 256 bytes on the, on the drive. But under DOS 3, it would take up 1024 bytes. If you had a file that's 1,025 bytes long, it's taken up 2,048 or 2K. So it was very wasteful of space. Now, on the other hand, I do remember when I was running bulletin boards, I used DOS 3 with 1050 drives because we'd max out the storage. Your, your, your message file for the bulletin board was the whole disk. So it didn't matter. So I liked that enhanced density, the 130. Eventually, I did switch over to using DOS 2.5. Actually, I believe I switched over to using my DOS because I liked the way it looked. It might have been Sparta DOS. But anyways, we now have four working disk drives for this computer. I only have one SIO cable. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the 410 program recorder, find out why it's not working. That may be a lost cause, but I'd like to get it to work. And then what I also will be doing while I'm doing that is I'm going to start recording videos of testing all of the software, and I do mean all of the software I have that came with this over 300 floppy disks full of software. Testing them, imaging them. To image them, I'm going to have to plug them in, plug this system into a Windows machine using, I think it's either Aspect or Respect, one of those two software programs, that lets the Windows machine pretend it's a 1050 drive, and I can then stick in the floppy, and I can copy from here through the PC, or through the Atari, into the PC and save the images and do all 300 of them. Odds are 99.9% .9 of all those disks, the software that's on them is floating around on the internet somewhere. But I'm going to do it anyways because you never know. Anyways, have a good day. And I don't say this very often, but if you made it this far, leave a comment down below and click like and subscribe. Have a great day.